Hi, I'm Jeremy. Mike here again. Jeremy, it seems like we have a couple of things to do before we wrap things up. And the first is we gave a pretty detailed example from my class, but it seems like we need more examples. Sure. Um, and the other thing is, is that we talked about how this is a useful model for determining what goes on inside and outside of class. And, and we need to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, one of the things I was kind of curious about, I wanted to ask you, when you talked about the experience and examine parts of your uh, example in the previous video, I get the impression that you were sort of doing those in class because it sounded like you were there with the students when they had their experience and when they did their reflection. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So the, the experience, the analyzing the map and the examine, and even some of the explain happened in okay. class. And I asked them to evaluate a new map outside of class. Ah. Um, but the explain part could actually be you know split. I think of something like color theory. That, ah. that can probably be taken care of a, with a quick screencast, you know, six or seven minutes that they could watch outside of class. But some of the discussion was much more dynamic and fun um, in class. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it kind of depends partially on how complex the material is maybe, if they can just kind of digest it on their own and have it explain their experience and uh, synthesize it, or if it might um, be uh, the kind of thing where you really want to be there to help them put it together. Uh, and also with the experiment part, I can imagine that that can go either way, right? right? Depending on how difficult it was or how daunting, you might want to have them have the support of you present, or they could go do it on their own to really kind of cut loose and uh, experiment without the scrutiny. Right. Yeah, okay, right. cool. Good. Well, uh, let's bring up a list of some of the things that you mentioned as examples that go beyond the one you provided us with. Great. And see how the learning cycle kind of can fall into things that we recognize as uh, sort of typical activities and exercises. You know, I look at this list and I get kind of excited just because I think about all the ways to give students kind of pretty rich experiences. Right. Um, just beyond me talking to them or them doing some readings and coming into class and discussing them. Yeah, it's a great list. And, you know, one thing I notice is that Say, for example, discussion shows up under reflective observation, but also um, oh, yeah. explaining. Right, right. Yeah, uh, it occurs to me that, you know, I sometimes think of discussion as a goal in and of itself. Mm -hmm. If I can get students to have a good discussion, that means they're engaged with the material. But I can also think of it as a means to an end. I can, I can ask them to think about a prompt and discuss something as a way of having them reflect. And then again, as a way of having them synthesize with their readings, maybe uh, uh, explain things to themselves, put things in, uh, again, to a conceptual language. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can bet, you know, the purpose is it's asking the question, what's the purpose for the discussion? And, yeah. you know, one discussion thread that you might kind of see is sort of a mess if it were in the abstract conceptualization phase might be completely appropriate for reflection as students are trying to work things out. It's going to be kind of messy. So. Right. Um, it just depends on your intent. Yeah, and the criteria by which you'd evaluate it to right. change, right? Yeah, oh, that's a really good point. Well, how does how does this list inform what you um, decide to do in and out of class? Yeah, I noticed um, that for me there's a tendency to see the list in sort of a symmetrical way. Um, I tend to divide the uh, the way that I parse things inside and outside of class along these lines. So I tend to have the concrete experience and the reflection happen before the night before, like online. So that's something I'd ask students to go um, look at something, watch a video, look at some images, um, have a reading, uh, maybe visit a place or something like that. So the experience would be something they did on their own and unmediated. And then the discussion, or the sorry, the uh, reflection would be something I would have them do probably as individuals to maybe involve a discussion forum or something like that. But probably I would give them a reflective writing. Uh, uh, I just tend to do that, a reflective writing activity. And then what I like to do is to be present for them when they come into class having done all that stuff. To me, that kind of loads them up with all kinds of rich things that we can talk about in class. And it also gives me lots of opportunities to match what they're sort of getting at already with what's in the readings, uh, what the literature says, what the best practices are, if we have a real sort of uh, clear standard methods or something like that from the discipline, um, then I can tie that stuff in. And I want to be there for that because I'm always worried as a content person that students might omit something or be ignorant of some really crucial thing that they have to know to be practitioners. And so I can tell right away sort of in a uh, you know, formative, evaluative kind of way, if that stuff is present or not when I have the, um, the synthesis part take place in class. Nice. It must, you know, the, having the experience and the reflection happen outside of class might, seems like it might also help you bring in instead of 
always referring to the textbook or your own notes for examples. Now you can pull examples from those first two phases of the learning cycle yeah. as you talk about you know, what we, we term content. Right. Often, yeah. right. Well, if a student articulates something like that, or if they've given it to me in a reflective writing assignment, that also makes me, um, give, gives me, sorry, a few ways to personalize things. So instead of like calling on someone who's not expecting to be called, and I can say, hey, you wrote about this, or this was something you noticed in the experience you had. Let's tie that into what the readings say. Uh, so it's kind of an easy way to keep things uh, more involved and engaged, too. And I'm guessing based, you know, we've talked about this as a flexible model and there are no hard and fast rules. I'm guessing this is sort of just a trend line for you, but there may be times when you do, you have to do concrete experience in class. They need your guidance for a particular lab or yeah. things shift around. Is that the case? Yeah, totally. I mean, a lot of the stuff I teach is falls within a certain range of, of subjects. And so I'm big on having the active experimentation part be the culmination of it. And so it's so crucial to me that I like to be there. But it really is more of a personal tendency and a way that that coincides with the material. This is just demonstrated so that people can see how I made the decision, but how I've decided to slice it isn't really important um, to others. Other people may see a completely logical division some other way. And maybe it's not symmetrical, maybe it involves you know, going back and forth between inside and outside of class. Yeah. I just wanted to model the decision-making process just to show that it really is flexible depending on what works for you. That's really helpful. I mean, it makes me think about going back to mine. You know, I had them experience the map and evaluate right. it in class, but that could, that could potentially be done online as long as they can't Google their way to the, you <laughs> know, the map, the mystery map that right. I gave them. Um, now, this, this is really helpful. And one of the other things that we um, provide online is some examples of the entire um, learning cycle that we've mapped out into a couple of um, units on measures of central tendency and data classification. The link is down below the video if you want to check those out. And uh, we'll provide other resources that uh, hopefully make the learning cycle a useful tool. Yeah, thank you for watching. Thanks.